afternoon. All right, one more time. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Peggy. I'm a master gardener with the Master Gardeners of Placer County. I will be your speaker today, and I guess I'm sort of moderating too because I'm introducing myself. I've been a master gardener since 2005. I'm a retired school teacher. I promise there won't be any homework, but hopefully we'll um, have lots of things for you to take away while this is in progress. Um, let me see what I need to say here. It's being recorded, just so you're aware of that. It will be available on the YouTube on our YouTube website, which you can link. I'll show you some slides of what our Master Gardener webpage looks like. And from there, you can directly go to already recorded videos. If you want to watch this one again, it will be available within a few days once it's up. And if you didn't get any of the handouts that we'll be talking about, they will be available there as well. And you can download them. So let's get started. Um, I am so excited to be associated with the Loomis Library, Seed Library, which I think is such an exciting project. Um, we have Joanne from the library today and she'll be talking about how to borrow seeds and how to return seeds and if you have to return seeds or not. So let's go ahead. First, we're going to look at, well, there we are, um, who the master gardeners are. We extend research-based sustainable gardening and compost information to home gardeners so that you can make your own informed decisions. We, you can find us in um, print and uh, technology through our hotline, our website, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There's a monthly column. Well, I, I'm sorry, I have done that more than once. I get my finger too close and it skips. We also have a quarterly newsletter, which is available um, through our website. I'll point that out when we get there. And we have a yearly, we don't call it calendar and gardening guide anymore. It is now the gardening guide and calendar because I know everybody has their calendar on their phone and their computer, but this one tells you what to do during the months of the year um, by week or even sometimes by um, day, but it doesn't have to be a course exactly on that day, but there are lots of hints in there throughout the year. And we are just getting ready to start our 2023 calendar. If you want a 22, 22 calendar, I can't remember which vendor has them, but they are only available now through nurseries. So check your local nursery and see if they're there. We also are very excited to be coming back to you live with um, our upcoming events. We have workshops that are still on Zoom, but we also have farmer's markets where you can bring something to our table, either a question or something that seems wrong in your garden, bring a sample of it. And there are people there who can answer your questions. We will be at fairs and festivals. Our garden fair will be at the Maidu Center. I believe it's April 9th, it's a Saturday. And our Mother's Day garden tour is on Mother's Day, obviously, and we will have I'm thinking six or seven gardens. I should have checked that. I'm sorry. That's something that people love going to. All right. And here is our website. Um, there is so much here to see. There's the banner across the top in gold. And every one of those is a drop down menu with 5, 10, 15, 20 things gardening year round goes clear down to the bottom of the page with choices. Lots to see there. On the left hand side in the buff color, you'll see the curious gardener newsletter sort of in the middle there. If you want to um, sign up for that quarterly newsletter. The workshops are right there in the middle. Upcoming events are listed and the virtual gardening workshops at the bottom there are the ones that were recorded 
that's where this one will be available within the next couple of days. That's our website on the left, the pcmg.ucanr.org. So now the resources that were uh, that are available, there's a resource page that gives you links and books and um, other information to find out more about seed saving, more about growing vegetables. There's a seed chart in there that we're going to see in a few slides, six tips for saving seeds and the easy peasy seeds. Those are gonna be the ones that you wanna start with if you've never saved seeds before. And here's our agenda for the first part of this. This is where I'm going to turn it over to Joanne. She'll talk about what is a seed library? How do I borrow seeds? How do I return seeds? And then I'll come back and talk to you about how to save seeds. Oop, sorry about that. There you are, Joanne. Okay, well, first I wanna say thank you to the Master Gardeners for supporting our seed library, as well as the Loomis Friends of the Library. They have been instrumental in funding us and they've done it since we got started about three years ago. And um, I think it, seed libraries aren't new, lots of libraries have them, but we have such a community centered library that and are in the middle of gardening all over that our library has been really uh, great about supporting this. And a seed library is a library that has seeds. And you can see from the pictures that um, Peggy put on the slide, there are huge libraries and then there's little tiny libraries that look like they're made out of lunch boxes. Ours is kind of in between the middle and the smallest. And what you need to know too about a seed library is that uh, it's not gonna provide you with seeds for your entire garden, but it's a good way to get started or to try something new or to see if you, have a way with certain kind of seeds or not or another. So um, there are common. There are six or more in Sacramento County at the Sacramento Public Library, and you can go to their website and click Seed Library and find other places. But if you want one right in your backyard, it's right here at the Loomis Library and Community Center. And in the next slide, you will see that's what our library looks like. That's what our seed library looks like. The binder on top is where you're going to have to fill out. Uh, form and a seed library is a place where seeds are saved. Sometimes there are seeds that are special to the community. Sometimes they're just like ours, are, when we have seeds there, they're gonna be the seeds that you can plant now and that you can actually be successful with. We wouldn't, we, we've decided we're gonna make sure that there are seeds in there that you can plant that will grow at this time. Not that you have to wait until February or August of next year to, to film that. And then in the binder, we have a, um, checkout sheet for you that we'll be showing you. Oops. <laughs> it's in the wrong place. <laughs> okay, so this is this is the, the form that you'll fill out. And it just is mostly for us. Um, we've learned, it was interesting because in the last couple of weeks, Peggy and my friend Juanita and I have been looking through this and we've discovered that the tomato seeds that I thought lots of people would go for were hardly ever checked out. So when we went to by current seeds, we kept very few tomato seeds. So um, it's important for us to keep track of what gets borrowed and what stays in the drawer. And we've done really made a big effort to make sure our seeds are up to date and viable. And the packets actually will say seeds good through and it'll give you a date. So you'll know that you have um, healthy, good seeds. But this is information for us. If this is also a good place, if you come in and you say, gee, there aren't any I don't know, there's no cotton seed. Why you'd want cotton seed, I don't know. But whatever seed that you don't that you don't see, you could give it as a suggestion. We take suggestions, although we're not like, you know, a green acres that you can come in and like get packets of this and packets of that, but it's a good place to get samples. And that's why you have to come in and, and our library is right next to the circulation desk, so you can't miss it. And just fill out that information, date, name, how many seed packets. And we'd like you to limit yourself to five packets at a time, you know, on the honor system. And when you're done, now, if you're, you don't have to, I mean, you don't have to um, return seeds, you can certainly try. But if you do, then there's this form available for you. And Peggy's gonna to talk to you about how to, how to gather them and save them, but this is the form that you would fill out. Um, and I'm not gonna read it because you all can read. And uh, then you return it to us and we'll, then we'll, we'll put it in the library in the future. And it's totally optional. You don't have to um, return the seeds at all. 
but it's a nice to keep things going. Joanne? Yes, ma'am. If, if I grow something and I'm not sure those seeds came true, can I put like experimental Surprise. or something? Surprise. Crap yes. shoot. Some, Give it a whirl. Some, <laughs> some, something to say, um, good luck. Try my experiment and see how it works for you. Right. Right. Sure, you can. And then if you label it, we'd let people know and they can take it knowing that maybe they'll come out to be tomatoes of wonder or maybe they'll come out to be something unique and different. Right. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go on to saving seeds. Joanne, thank you. Um, I, I think you and Juanita are doing a great job. Thank you. Posting this and making sure that the seeds are there. Um, I'm I'm excited to be involved. And so we appreciate the Master Gardeners, but I, I forgot to mention the Master Gardeners are going to be putting in some inspirational gardens at our community library. So you want to stick around in the future and see what how that's looking because they are quite um, involved with our library. And now how to save seeds. Okay, so <laughs> now we're going to look at why should we save seeds and what should we save a plan for saving, how to save, and then a little bit about growing um, the seeds that you have. The beauty of seeds is rivaled only by their purpose within the confines of the seed coat. Every seed holds a connection to the future and to the past. The embryonic plant that rests within a seed contains not only the promise of what is to come as it is nurtured and grows from a young seedling into a mature plant, but also the history and traits that properly save to pass down from generation to generation. I thought that was important that the earth is contained in within that seed. So why should you save seeds? To cultivate locally adapted plants. This is looking back at how people used to grow their own um, kitchen gardens and they had the same plants from year to year and they did save their seeds and they grew in the conditions where those people lived. You wanna preserve natural diversity, protect heirloom varieties, get free seeds and create new varieties either by choice or accidentally. And as Joanne mentioned, that could be a good thing or not so much. So what to save? Gardeners choose their vegetables by taste and texture, by productivity, by when they bear early or late, depending on the seasons where you live. If you think people who are covered in six feet of snow right now aren't quite as anxious to get out in the garden as we are here in California. Disease and pest resistance, their drought tolerance, and whether they are slow to bolt, which means going to seed before you want your last lettuce leaf in the house. Corporations choose uniformity, so it's easy to pack, long storage life, stability when shipping. You know, they never pick tomatoes ripe. They only pick tomatoes colored red, but not ripened on the vine and cosmetic values, the ones that look pretty. You know, some of those really great tasting vegetables are rather awkward looking. So this is a chart that shows the loss of seed variety, came from uh, National Geographic magazine. At the top, there were 3,879 choices of vegetable seed in 1903. The bottom, I can't see now because I've got um, you guys Says there. By, by 1983, there were down to 307 choices. That's what Okay, 1983, I couldn't remember the date. Yes, and I figured out, did my math today, it's 8% of what used to be available. If you look at the white arrows, cabbage was 544 different kinds of cabbage in 1903. That seems amazing to me. Now we're down to only 28, but gosh, I didn't even realize that there were 28 varieties of cabbage. Maybe I need to do a little homework on that one, find out how many are still existing. So know your parent plant. We'll talk about open pollinated versus hybrid seeds. 
This is a 1.8 pound brandy wine heirloom tomato grown by one of our master gardeners. I love the fact that it was on the scale when she took the photo. That made a whole lot of big sandwiches. So open pollinated plants have stable genetic makeup and breed true to type so that you can know that your brandy wine tomato will be a brandy wine tomato next year. Hybrid plants have been produced in the greenhouse by crossing two distinct parent lines. They're often labeled F1, which means filial one or filial I think comes from the Latin word for son or child. Anyway, it's the, it's the next um, issue from those two plants and it will not breed true because it takes those two plants to make the new one and you have just the new one. So what you get might be a real surprise. And here are some open pollinated tomatoes, lots of different colors and choices and sizes. And here are some hybrids. If you look on the left, the, red, the cherry ones, someone grew that particular hybrid seed again the next year just to see what happened. And the comments were that they looked, that well, they were quite a bit smaller, but they still did taste good, but it took a whole lot of picking to get that handful of tomatoes. Sun Gold is also an F1 hybrid as is Midnight. Um, I can't read it again. Snap. Just... Snap. I need close that up. There we go. Okay. Now I can see it says midnight snack. Thank you. Know your parent plant. I just had to stick this in there. There is, there was, it hasn't happened since COVID, but an international exposition where they have heirloom varieties of everything you can imagine from the vegetable patch and speakers. So you might wanna look at, into that if you're interested in heirloom seeds. It's quite something to see. So when you plan for seed saving, you wanna start with easy crops. You need to grow enough of those plants. And if you're growing different varieties, then you need to put spaces between those varieties. The easy peasy seeds handout will tell you more about which seeds are good for saving. Peas, beans, lettuce, tomatoes, arugula, which will cross with anything wild in your yard that is a weed in the arugula family, as dill will also cross with wild dill weeds. But there are videos at the um, Richmond Grows, and that's the um, Richmond Seed Library, and they have videos on saving peas, beans, and lettuce to help you get started. The link is on your resource sheet. Now we'll look at the saving seeds chart. This is the eye opener. If you look at this, you can download this. It's one of the choices that will be accompanying the, the video. If you look at the red arrow, that oval shows you the distances that you need to plant um, your different varieties. If you're growing corn, for instance, about halfway down the chart, you need to be have a half a mile between your sweet corn and your popcorn, or, or you're going to get sweet popcorn next year. You won't be able to save the seeds. It won't affect this year's crop. The pollination Oh, that my, it says my internet, so if I zone out, it's not my fault. Um, so there are large distances required if you're growing two things that might cross. So that's why it's a good idea to start if you look at the gold arrow with the ones that say self under pollination because those are the ones that have a kind of flower that makes it difficult for an insect to get in there and, um, and get pollen and take it to another plant. They're pretty much self-contained. The um, 
red arrow is covering up the column that says pollinator. And you'll see that self has no um, help. It just pollinates itself. There are some others in there that are wind pollinated or insect pollinated. And those are the ones where you can get in trouble. So how to save seeds. You need to know when your seeds are mature, then collect your bounty and store it safely. Mature seeds are not that beautiful tomato you're gonna to take in and slice for your sandwich. You want the ones that were left on the bush to ripen until they look like those in the picture. And that's when you have mature seeds that will produce a plant next year. The bean there, you can see the top um, is green. It's not, they're not ripe. They're not ready for picking. You need the seeds that are in a dry papery pod. And those are the ones that you can collect. And the lettuce, did you know lettuce looks like that? Those are lettuce seeds. If you have fragile seeds like the lettuce or some that explode, you might put a bag over it. She see she put the bag on first, then she's gonna cut it off and probably tie that bag closed until those seeds are fully ripe and mature and can be harvested. Then you're going to save your seeds. There's dry saving seeds and decanting the seeds. Those are probably tomato seeds on the right. We'll talk about how to save those. The ones that are dry like beans and peas, you just take them out of the pod. The other ones take a little more effort. Here is somebody decanting tomato seeds by squeezing those really ripe tomatoes until the seeds and the pulp come out. You put them in some water, you leave them for three or four days and they'll get yucky. And there's a fungus layer on top and the mature healthy seeds will fall to the bottom. That's when you can take off that top layer, pour the seeds through a strainer. Um, you, might, you might pour off what you can that's on the top because there will be um, seeds floating that are not viable and you don't wanna mix those with your viable seeds, but scoop off all that top part and then rinse those seeds and lay them out to dry. You want to not put them right in the hot sun. You want them in the shade. They need lots of air. <coughs> on the left, you see somebody used a coffee filter. On the right is just a paper plate. And then you wanna store them safely. You wanna keep them in a cool, dry place. And you want to package them so that moisture can't get into where they're being saved. The one on the left there is like a, a plastic shoebox. There are seed or pill cap, uh, pill bottles there, a jar with a lid. Here's a special box you can go out and buy if you want something really shishy. Or if you have a whole lot, you might put them in a silo. So now sharing seeds, <clears throat> we've talked about, but I wanna go through a couple of things here. Your seed saving rules, you wanna plan for food and seeds, as I mentioned, so that you can let some of your crop go to seed. You wanna know the seed saving rules, not hybrid varieties, start with easy peasy. The seed chart has advice on which ones are good. Proper cleaning, drying and storage. <coughs> Recapping, saving seeds allows you more choices, varieties you enjoy, and plants adapted to your garden. <coughs> now let's look at growing vegetables. And this is gonna be a really short part of this talk because I'm going to refer you to the red arrow. The saving or growing a summer garden has already been recorded and is available. You can switch this one off and go right there if that's what you want more information about. The blue arrow shows you where you can find the Placer County planting guide, which I'll show you on the next slide. <coughs> you can download it for yourself. This page is the warm season vegetables 
The next page is the cool season vegetables. Then we say warm season and cool season because you can see when you start your summer vegetables, you're not starting in summer. You have to get a head start on your, on your veg. Um, <coughs> the bean icon is when you start your seeds indoors. So for instance, eggplants right there at the top need six to eight weeks of growing in a pot before they get put out in the garden because they need that head start so that you get eggplants before they get too cold in the fall. The other um, yellow arrow points to the chocolate chips and those are direct seeded into the garden. The winter squash right above the beans that it points to shows you that you can get a head start in April with indoor planting, or you can seed them out into the garden in May and June. So there are different needs for different veg. And the other one goes to the cool season crops, which will not be available in the seed library um, drawers until June or July when you need to start those seeds to get them in your garden. Those seeds need to grow for six, they need to be 70% mature by the middle of November when the sunlight goes below 10 hours a day. So you need to have those plants in the garden ready and happy and growing. <clears throat> That's why we talk about warm season, cool season. So that's it. Do we have any questions, Barbara, that I can answer? Uh, no, we do not have any questions yet. If uh, anyone has a question, you can please put it in the chat. Uh, there's a chat icon down at the bottom of your Zoom menu. The gardening guide that, Bar that um, Peggy talked about is available uh, printed at the library, at the seed library um, place. And then it's also on the website and that's on the library's website. If you go, there's a section that says seed library and you can go there and it'll come up for you. I think it points to our master gardener page. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, the seed library has several interesting um, handouts available along the side of where the seed library catalog is. Um, there's a, a packet of folders there that you can look through and find, I think, um, seed viability is in there too, Joanne. Is that uh, correct? Yes, that one's there, yes. We have a question yes. from Jocelyn. Are all seed seeds vegetable seeds or are there also flower seeds? What a great question. Um, there are flower seeds. Joanne, do you know how many choices? Sunflowers, I know. And there's a red sunflower that if you can grow, I want to see it because I've tried to grow it for three summers and have not been successful. Um, <laughs> Juanito, do you remember what else there was? There was... Um, there, is, maybe. There's a couple of sunflowers. Um, Gee, I'm, I'm blanking out right now. There was one called candy, candy, it was. I think it's the zinnia. Zinnia, okay. The candy stripe. And there's a whole um, list if, on the library website of what plants, of what seeds. If there, are, if there are people on this talk who have suggestions, type them into the chat. You might be surprised to see what shows up in the drawers. Okay, we have another question from Grace. Are cucumber seeds saved the same way tomato seeds are saved? Mm. That's a great question, Grace. Hey, you're you, need, <laughs> you need to do some research, Madam Master Gardener, but I suspect yes, because they are in a pulpy kind of uh, fruit. And so I would guess that it's a similar uh, fermenting process but I can do some research and get back to you. Uh, Kathleen says that she tried those red sunflowers too with no luck. 
Um, Marilyn says Mexican sunflower are proliferant. And I want to thank Marilyn for returning some of those Tithonia seeds to the library. If you haven't grown that plant, I suggest you do. There are more than 60 pollinators who benefit from um, having that plant in your yard. It's an annual. It grows, Marilyn, about four feet tall, four feet wide, maybe. <clears throat> And you can get it in yellow or orange. And I will see that we have some of those seeds in the drawers. Sure. Diane has a question. Uh, do all vegetables need to ripen on the plant in order to get viable seeds? Yes. Okay, and Marilyn, uh, I think she's making a comment uh, about the Mexican sunflower saying yes, four inch tall in good area. Four feet. Oh, four feet, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> four inch tall is teeny teeny. And Grace says, thank you, Peggy. I will research saving cucumber <laughs> seed. Yeah, you get back to me, Grace. Are there any other questions? I wanna thank you all, this was fun. I think that's it. <laughs>